Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Legend 4 tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to add the stamina in that we created last time into the UI slash the HUD uh, so the player can easily see how much stamina that they have left. If you haven't already I would recommend watching my previous video in which I showed you how to make the sprinting and stamina mechanics uh, including the stamina being used and regenerated and stuff like that. Uh, I'll link that video in the description or on the screen now. So what you're going to want to do first is open up the blueprints folder which is in first person BP and then blueprints or whatever you've got it under. So what you're going to want to do now is create the HUD widget. So how we're going to do that is right click, go to blueprints, blueprint class, go all classes, search for HUD, H-U-D, click on that one and select and you can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it player HUD. Like so. And so this is the heads up display that you see on screen to show the player all of the necessary information they, they need, such as the stamina, the health, hunger, etc. Um, and I'll put an example on the screen now. And then what we're going to want to do is go to the world settings of your level slash map in the game. And to do this, it's either on the right over here, next to details, your world settings, or if it's not there, go up to window in the top left and down to world settings, and that should take you here. And then you want to go under selected game mode. If you haven't already got a game mode override, you're going to want to set that as first person or third person, whatever it is. And then down to HUD class, choose the one that you just made, so mine's player HUD. And that means that we use the HUD that we've just made instead of the default one that it already has. Now we're going to create the imagery for it, so the canvas if you like, or what, of what the player will see. And to do this we can go back to where we created the HUD, so down to the content browser here, right click, go to user interface, and widget blueprint. I'm going to call mine just widget HUD. Uh, but again, you can call yours whatever you want, it doesn't really matter too much. And now we're going to just load it up. Wait for this to load. There we go. So this is what the player will see when they're playing your actual game. So this white box in the middle here, where it's selected blue, is what the player will see. So this is going to be in the middle of the screen. So this is where you put all the UI, the imagery, all of that kind of stuff. And on the left here is the palette, which includes all the items, objects you can place in, such as progress bars, sliders, text, all of that. I'm just going to delete these for now. I'm just going to be using the default base items that Unreal provides, so that you can create your own custom images and art for this. However, for the speed of this tutorial, I won't be, but the process is the exact same. You would just use your own in images instead of the ready made progress bar. Although I will sh also show you how to do this, I'm just not going to. So if I just drag in this progress bar here, make it a little bigger so we can see it, and then drag this percentage bar over here on the right, you can see that it gets filled up and goes down accordingly as a stamina or a health bar or whatever should do. Yeah, you can also change the bar fill type down here from left to right or right to left, so it's like that, or fill from center, so it goes like that, just to make it a little different and unique for your own game. But I'm just gonna leave mine as from left to right, like so. Uh, you can also change the appearance of it down here, so for example, the color, Let's set mine to a nice, I don't know, green, why not? And then you can change all there. And then under the style up here, this is where you can change the actual images itself. So if you want to do it your own personal style instead of just like this, this is where you do it under the style. And I'll show you more into that later on. And this can just give it a texture or your own art style. Different images will look better for different genres. For example, you'd want a horror bar to look different than just a normal survival exploration bar. And this is where you can customize it. However, like I said, I'm just going to leave it as the default as I don't have any custom images and just for speed of the tutorial. But it's simple enough, you just select your own images here and that's it. All you do is just drag and drop images into the content browser down here that you're going to use. You might want to create a new folder for it, like right clicking new folder, just for the, to keep it organized and stuff like that. And then you go into the background image or fill image, whatever you want, which one, and just put it in here. And a quick way of doing it of selecting it is if you select the image down here like that, but obviously with the image, go back in here, press this little arrow here, you will use the selected image that you want. And so it's, that's it, simple enough like that. And again, you can change the size of it to make sure it fits, the tint, all of that, just to make sure it looks just how you want. Uh, we're also going to want to anchor this to where we want. So if we just put it in the position where we want it, I'll just keep it there. And then that's a good size as well. And then, see, this is the anchor point here. So if we left it as the anchor here, then it would move somewhere up here to the top left as it's trying to go up to the top left of the screen here. So if we change this anchor point to the centre middle, centre bottom, sorry, it will stay anchored here and won't move in the viewport when we load it up. And again, you, you just do this with all of them accordingly. So if you had it over here, then you, oh, probably 
tilt it to the right, but you'd have it to the middle right like that. But again, I'm just going to keep it down here. Like so. And then you want to drag in some text from here. Make sure it's the text, not the text box. And this can display the value for the remaining stamina if you'd want that. And it also works well for health, so the value of health left. Although you don't need to do this if you don't like it, but I'm going to show you how to anyway. And you also want some text here as well, just to tell you that it is the stamina bar, just so it doesn't get confusing. So the player that understands everything that's on the HUD and can tell it apart, which is especially helpful if you have multiple bars on the screen at once. For example, health, hunger, stamina, etc. So I'm just going to change this text box over here. So if you click on it, go to content, and where it says text, change that from text box to stamina. Make sure I do that properly. Stamina, there you go. Place that there, wherever you want it. And then this will be the value. I'll just set it to a base of 100, just so that it looks cleaner and better in the viewport when we're doing this. So this that number here doesn't matter too much as we're going to change it later on according to the actual uh, stamina that's left. Same with the bar, but just to make it look better and cleaner in the viewport, we'll do that. If you also want, if we can align this in the middle and then do this, and make sure that whatever the number is, it'll always be perfectly centered. Just get these so they they look the same. There we go. It's looking good. Just move that up a little bit. There we go. So yeah, I'm just doing it quickly because this isn't for an actual game. This is just purpose to tell you how to do it. And you're going to want to again to make sure that these are anchored to the right point. So down here like that, just so they don't move. They stay where we want, and it looks all clean and nice. Uh, you can also customise these texts as well by changing the colour down here, the font, the size, whatever you want. I might just change mine to a nice red, like that, or pink, that works as well. And the fonts. I haven't really got many imported, so I'll just leave it like that. In actual fact, I'm going to change it to blue, just so it goes a bit better with the green that I've got for that. There we go. I'll leave that one as white. Another reason why we've changed this to that, to the number, which as well just to make it look cleaner and nicer on this interface here, when editing it all, it's also just so that we remember that is the numerical box, which, talking of which, it's always a good idea to name them all so you know what you're doing. So I'll just do that now. There we go, so I've just named them stamina bar, stamina value, and just stamina, just so I know which one's which. It makes it a lot easier later on. And now that we've created all of the HUD elements and they're inside of the display, where and how we want them, we just need to tell the game to actually display this to the player. And so to do this, we're going to want to load up the HUD we created earlier. So if you go back here, player HUD, there we go, you can go to the event graph. You're going to want to go off of event, begin play, do create widget, select the widget that we just made, which is I called widget HUD. And off of this, we're going to do add to viewport and have the target as the return value for that and this means that it is adding this widget here that we just created to the viewport if you don't hook this up then it won't work it won't add this one to the viewport there and the reason we're using event begin play is because this means now that every time the game is loaded up and starts the hud will be created and placed on the screen and this means that there's no chance that it isn't created or applied it just goes like that into there every time it turns up now we're going to set the value changing accordingly with the stamina decreasing and or increasing. And so what we're going to do now is compile this, go back over to the widget HUD. And now we're going to set up the value changing accordingly with the stamina decreasing and or increasing. And so to change this value here, click on this, change this value here, what we're going to do is we're going to want to use something called bindings, which essentially changes this value based on a function we will create later. So for this text and progress bar, I set it to the stamina variable we've created earlier in the last episode, so it displays and changes with the player stamina changing. Uh, so let's start with the text here, which will display the numerical value of the remaining stamina. So let's click it, go down to its content here, where we already are, and hit bind next to the text box. Then hit create binding, and this will take us to a function that we're going to set up to change the text according to the changing stamina value. Now what we're going to do is just move this out, it gives it a little bit of space, and I'll explain what this does. Now what everything in this function means is quite straightforward. This return node here is basically the final result and is what will return the value to the text box that we put 
on the HUD itself and be constantly updating with the function. So if the stamina is 80, the return order would take the value 80 and return it to the HUD to be displayed in the text. Now we need to access the player character to get the stamina variable that we created and convert it into a string and connect it into the return order that I just explained. And to do this, we break the link here by right clicking it and break link. What we're going to want to do is come off here and cast to first person character or whatever yours is, third person, first person or just the name of the character that you've made but it's basically where your stamina uh, variable is and so this allows us to communicate with the character blueprint and access its variables for example the stamina and then off of object here you want to drag it out and get player character then hook up as first person character get stamina so it's basically going into the first person character blueprint and getting the stamina variable that we made and what we're going to want to do is hook it up to this return value here which should automatically convert it to a string like so but if it doesn't do that because for some reason some people it might not work you want to go to to string and then hook that up like that and then click hook up this to that leave the cast failed because if it fails we don't want it to do anything but there's no reason it should fail and if you don't hook that up then nothing's going to happen because it will get all of this but it's, this basically tells it to, once it's done all this, go on to that. Now let's compile it and test it. So just close that, press play. There we go. That's now on the screen. And as you can see, it's going down. As I'm sprinting, go back up. It goes back up to 101. Okay. So that all works perfectly. But now we just need to do the progress bar as well, because as you saw, that didn't change because we haven't set up the bindings for it yet. But that's pretty simple, it's basically the same as this, just with a little bit of maths involved as well. So to be able to do the same with the progress bar, we're gonna to want to go back to the designer, to select the progress bar, go back over to here, go to progress, and then bind, create binding. I'm gonna do the same thing, give ourselves a bit of space here, cast to your character again. Mine is just first person character, there we go. Object once again just get player character like so as first person character get stamina and then this isn't a string node anymore this is now a float which is basically just an integer but with decimal spaces so an integer is like one two three but a float can be like 1.5 2.5 2.8 something like that so again just drag it in to convert it to a float. Or again, if that doesn't work, then you can just do to float, like so. Oh, and then connect it up. And once again, remember to make sure that all this is connected properly. Now as the stamina goes up to 100, but the HUD value only goes up to one, as you see here, the percent only goes to one, zero to one. So we just need to do some simple maths before this bit. We want to do a float divided by float to come off that. Do float divided by float. Put the bottom one as 100 and plug that into there. Convert it like that. Now this value may be different depending on what your max stamina is. So this divided by 100 here. But I'd recommend changing your max stamina to 100 as it's easier to do this maths here. Now if that sounds like a lot of stamina to you, remember you can change how quickly it goes down by, by what the stamina decreases by. And if you can't remember how to do that, just go back to my previous video, which again will be linked at the end of this video and in the description. And once again, remember to hook this all up, otherwise, again, it won't work. Now let's hit compile, press play to test it, let it load, and the stamina is all there. I'm walking, I run, it all decreases. So you can see the text value is decreasing from 100 down to zero, so is the stamina bar, progress bar, sorry. Both hit 50 at the right place. This is perfect, and again, you can style it however you want. You can make it bigger, smaller, different positions, different colors, different font, image, all of that. And now this works perfectly, so that'll be it for this video. Everything works as I wanted. The stamina bar is displayed, and it changes as it decreases and regenerates. And this process also works for other values, such as health or hunger. It's all just the same, but where you plugged in the stamina value here, you just plug in health or whatever you want. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below, and I'll try my best to help. And so thank you for watching. The previous video is linked in the description 
and at the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed, I'll see you in the next one.